I've never really been good at math, but that's what today's video is about, AI and math. Well, it's my first video for 2025. Happy New Year, everyone. So through 2024, there were a lot of experiments done to make AI reason better. And Microsoft has offered a small model at 14 billion parameters, but still state-of-the-art that claims to be able to do complex reasoning and specializes in math. Today, I'm going to test it out. The main model itself is available on Azure AI Foundry for deployment, but I'm not gonna test it that way. That's just too much for what I do for just testing. So over on Hugging Face, some people have already grabbed the weights and trained their own or moved it over to Hugging Face or whatever. So we have this one with 5.4 at BF16. Then there's also this one here that's running quantized versions. So if I click over on files, we have Q4, Q6, Q8, and F16. Just quickly, some features about it. It's a 14 billion parameter state-of-the-art model. It outperforms larger models on reasoning because it uses synthetic data sets, well-curated, high-quality organic data, and new post-training techniques. It specializes in mathematical reasoning and outperforms state-of-the-art models on math according to a test done up against certain standards at the Mathematical Association of America. Now, all of this information is according to a blog post from Microsoft, the one I just showed you. Right here, we have the benchmark test from Microsoft on their blog post. You can pause it if you want to look at it. I also have links down in the description about how do you run this on text generation web UI on a Linux computer. I have made a video with instructions about how to do that. My test is going to be on the 8-bit quant. I'm running this on a Ubuntu computer with an RTX 3080 and a 3070 in a cluster together. First prompt, in a competition, five contestants, Eve, Frank, Grace, Henry, and Ivy compete in three different events, swimming, running, and cycling. Each contestant wins a different event, and the following statements are true. Eve did not win the swimming event. Frank won the cycling event. Grace did not win the running event. Henry did not win the swimming event or the running event. Ivy won the event that is not swimming or running. Based on these statements above, determine which event each contestant won. To begin with, you can see it says, let's solve this step by step using the information provided and it's outputting its chain of thought. Here's the part that really impresses me. Since Frank has won the cycling and Henry didn't win swimming or running, Henry must have won cycling, but given the contradiction, we deduced that Frank is the only cyclist. Therefore, the correct interpretation for statement five is that Ivy won cycling. This means the statement Henry did not win swimming or running effectively rules him out of the cycling as well, confirming Ivy as the cyclist. As you go down, you can see that through process of elimination, it's figured out the winners are swimming Grace, running Eve, cycling Ivy, and the other ones were eliminated. Then it says here, Frank's win in cycling was previously misunderstood as a contradiction. It's a mistake to have Henry with cycling confirming the above setup. Now let's try an applied mathematics question that also involves space travel. What is the average distance from the Earth to the Sun and how long would it take a vessel to travel there at a speed of 13,000 miles per hour? I like that this is kind of fast for 14 billion parameters. They did good with this. The average distance from the Earth to the Sun is about 93 million miles, which is referred to as one astronomical unit. To calculate how long it would take a vessel traveling at 13,000 miles per hour, we've got time equals distance divided by speed. So we're looking at 7,153 hours, or about 298 days, and that's roughly correct. I also like down here, it says, keep in mind this is a simplified calculation and doesn't account for the gravitational influences and orbital mechanics involved in such a journey. I like it when the LLMs that I ask this question to do the math, but then explain, well, there are other variables involved here. The next question tests relative position. A drone starts at point A and moves 10 meters east, then 5 meters north, and finally 15 meters west. Where is the drone relative to point A? To determine the drone's position relative to point A, we can break down its movement step by step. Initially, the drone moves 10 meters east, then 5 meters north, then 15 meters west. Starting at point A, the drone first travels 10 meters east, then it moves 5 meters north, maintaining its eastward position. Finally, it travels 15 meters west. After moving 15 meters west, it effectively moves 5 meters west from its initial eastward position since it had initially move 10 meters east. Thus, the drone is now 5 meters west, 5 meters north of point A. It showed its chain of thought and came to the conclusion that the drone is now 5 meters west and 5 meters north of point A, which is correct. Here's a prompt that will test the AI's capability to calculate probabilities. A bag has red, green, and blue marbles. The probability of selecting a red marble is one third and the probability of selecting a green marble is two fifths. What is the probability of selecting a blue marble? I don't really know if that's the correct answer to the question since math is not my strong point, but when I asked O1 from OpenAI ChatGPT, it said the 
the answer was 41 over 132. If uh, you're good at math and have a better answer, would you do me a favor and put that in the comments? Appreciate it. I don't really know how I found myself in this place asking AI these questions. I mean, like, for real, I didn't go to college and I dropped out of high school. I started just going into IT work right away, and even for what little high school I did, I was terrible at algebra. The next question mixes optimization with geometry. A farmer has 100 meters of fencing to enclose a pen for his sheep. The pen must maximize its area and adhere to the following conditions. The pen must be rectangular. One side of the pen must border a river and does not require fencing. The farmer wants to divide the pen into two equal sections by adding a fence perpendicular to the river for easier sheep management. What dimensions of the pen maximize the enclosed area? What is the maximum area of the pen under these constraints? If the farmer wants to fence only 80% of the total possible area for cost reasons, what should the dimensions of the pen be? Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of 01's answer versus 5-4's answer. Well, that wraps it up. That was 5-4 doing math questions that were over my head. Uh, if you want to test this model out and you come up with any cool math questions, you're welcome to post in the comments if you have any suggestions for what kind of math stuff I can ask. I'm looking for different categories of math questions so that in the future that I can ask LLMs that are specialized in math those different types of questions. If you found this video to be valuable, please click the like button. If you want to see me test open source LLMs and give suggestions and also step-by-step -step tutorials on how to install various open source programs, language models, and other stuff on your local Linux computer, please subscribe to my channel because this is what I'm doing on a regular basis. Now that you've made it to the end of the video, here's a crazy squirrel that got loose in my house once. Squirrel, it's okay. Look, go outside. Come on.